So yeah, I'm Floris. Um, I, I'm on the number zero team. Uh, and uh, yeah, we basically, we made Iro and we then uh, put it in, in, into, managed to put it into a real application and actually ship this. And that's kind of what I will be talking about here. Um, so Iro, uh, there have been several talks about it already, explaining more detail on it. I won't go into too much detail here. Um, uh, but yeah, essentially, for us, this was like our, our, our first prototype. Uh, it, it's really like it was really like where do we want to go with with content with a, building a content addressable system um, that that does all the verified streaming etc. But also, what is like the very first minimal step we we, we can make something useful with, um, and that's what this this is essentially. This is the first prototype and a step in that direction. Um, so it basically transfers data um, using verified streaming. Uh, if you if you miss those talks, they're, they're probably recordings. Um, it's content addressable, peer to peer, and importantly, also for, for us here, is authenticated. Um, uh, and then, what is Delta Chat? Uh, it's basically a messenger. It looks uh, like in the middle of the screen. It's like you know, it looks like any other messenger. Um, but it has like no infrastructure of its own. It relies on email infrastructure and uh, any kind of. Well, most people will initially think like, really? Um, that was my reaction to it uh, the first time. But yeah, it, it, it works remarkably well. Like it, it really does. Um, because, because it has now no infrastructure, you can, you can use whatever email service you like. You can configure your own island. You can do, yeah, yeah it, it's, it works pretty well uh, and seems to be fairly popular. Um, the other thing is also like, uh, it's surprisingly censorship, censorship resistant. Um, it just turns out that regimes that try and shut down messengers occasionally don't shut down email um, because they can't, presumably. Um, anyway, um, relevant to us, it uses opportunistic encryption. Um, there is also a way of like forcing encryption on, on, on chats, um, but by default it's opportunistic. Um, and also it ships to like the, well, the three main platforms in this case. It's like Android, iOS, desktop. Um, there's actually like a ton of like the, the right hand side of this is like all the all the different downloads you can get, which is like more than I even knew existed. Um, so yeah, it, it it gets shipped and it runs on, on a lot of uh, platforms. Um, what we care about today for, for it is, is like multi-device because it just connects to your email server. It connects to your SMTP and IMAP server. Your IMAP server usually stores your messages for you, at least until you delete them. You can configure Delta Chat to delete messages, et cetera, for you. But if you leave them on there for a little while, your second device already can, can, can see the same messages on the server. Um, and IMAP also already synchronizes the unread state, et cetera. So this kind of works remarkably well if you, if you get to, um, if you just configure a second device. Unfortunately, that encryption part kind of uh, plays, a, plays a role now because um, when you first set up an account in, in Delta Chat, uh, you just tell it the login details to your, to your email server, but then it also generates a private key. If you do this to independently on two different devices, you'll get different private keys and everything breaks. So if you want to use two devices, um, then you, you really need to transfer your private key. The solution that Delta Shed uh, done for is, you know, is this kind of the obvious like export import. Um, they also do like, they, it's usually like recommended to not just export the key, but the whole database like the whole the whole state of the, of the messenger essentially so you actually get like all the all the history and, and etc um easily um so that's kind of what what has been yeah what has worked for for like a long time um but this is very painful if you ask, ask a normal user like export a backup on your phone now where is it how do i get it to my pc no idea all right um so obvious solution for us that's at iro uh, and because this is our, like our, our first prototype, like we, we very limited the scope of this very much. Like we assume, we, we basically tell you only do this on the same local network. Like this is not too much of a restriction because usually you have your phone next to your desktop or something when you're doing this or your laptop or whatever. Um, also, it uses out of band communication using QR codes. Um, this is already an established thing, like QR codes are already used in, by Delta Chat for, for a couple of other things, 
like uh, if, you, if you want to force encryption, etc., you, you do this with, with QR codes already. Uh, so even though you already have like a mixture of machines, like your desktop might not be able to scan QR codes, there are already workarounds for this. You can copy paste the text of the, the QR code and then move that across somehow. Uh, it can be annoying, but it, it's possible basically, and, and it's an established thing, so this shouldn't be anything new for, for Delta Chat. Uh, another consequence of this is because we are, uh, IRO is a content addressable system, is that we essentially, the basic mechanism is you need to create the backup first to be able to compute the hash. So it's one directional. Like you need to, you need to the, the provider essentially provides a QR code, the, the new device has to do the scan. Um, um, yeah, that's about like the restrictions we set out. So uh, the other reason we thought this, this, this cooperation was really nice was like, basically the, the, the goals are very aligned. Like the both projects were already written in Rust. Um, Delta Chat is kind of architected in a way that they have, they try and do as much as they can in, in, the, in the core library, which is, um, uh, which is written in Rust. And then they try and do as little as possible, I guess, in, in, in the UIs. So and the UIs are actually then written in, in um, Java, Swift and, and uh, Node.js, I think, for the desktop one. Um, and they already have bindings for that. Um, they use, uh, I think, the, the Java and iOS bindings are using CFFI. Um, desktop has a mixture of that and, and JSON RPC now, I think. Um, and, and, and the interesting thing for us uh, uh, is also like Delta Chat has already figured this out how to ship this code to all their platforms. Like they support phones um, that are terribly old, like uh, Android 4 still. And um, they already have figured out the tool chain, the, comp the compiling, etc. So all the hard work hopefully has already, has already happened. Uh, should be easy. Um, so how to go about this? Um, IRO's main concept about is, is really about uh, collections. Um, so collection is just a uh, essentially a, a list of, of files uh, or a list of hashes. So um, it's currently uh, basically it's a, it's, a, it's a name plus a hash and then the hash is another blob and that's then usually a file. So um, the plan for, for, for the provider side here was to, um, the database in, in SQLite where most of the state is stored is, is uh, SQLite in Delta Chat. Um, so to have something that we need to hash, we first have to ex create a database export. Unfortunately, that is still duplicating data on, on, on the device's storage. If that's an SD card, that can be painful. Um, but even so, um, and then basically we add that to the collection. And then the other thing that uh, usually if you have large accounts, you have, have lots of attachments to emails. Um, they're basically like image vid videos, you know, it's just the messenger. You get all these things like stickers, I don't know what else. Um, uh, and they all, all, all get added to this collection, essentially. Then you start the, start the server, essentially, the IRO provider, which is just a network server, listens, listens for connections, and now you can create a QR code basically with all the information in it. Um, so the QR code essentially contains um, the hash of the collection, so you, so you know what to ask. It contains um, where to reach the provider on the network, because you're supposed to be on the same local network. Um, uh, it contains the peer ID, so you know you're connecting to the right provider and you can't be man in the middle. Um, and then it contains also an authentication code, so again, because the provider is just listening on the local network and doesn't want us just everyone to, to, to start connecting to it. Um, so that's the provider side. The receiver side is basically, you know, the opposite direction, fairly straightforward at this point. Gets a QR code, um, connects to your provider, request the hash. Then this whole bio verified streaming happens, all the files arrive. At the end of that, you need to, you need to import your database into your running SQLite system again, and um, you have to start the system again. Like start the system is like, because while you're doing this, also on the provider side, Delta Chat has to be a little careful that you're not at the same time going to modify the files. So it tries to like stop the system as much as it can. So no files are being modified because otherwise we get hash, hash changes. Um, so going about this, it's a kind of, um, uh, we, we, we had IRO um, basically implementation prepared and um, we made a release. Uh, we also created the Delta Chat PR, um, basically been what's like fully reviewed, had like tests, 
um, has a little like developer-oriented testing tool in there as well that like a couple of people had tried out, you transfer, etc. So everything worked perfectly fine. Transfers worked on, on, on real accounts of people with that testing tool. So uh, time to ask the, the, the UI developers, the app developers, um, to start you know, Im implementing this on their side. Um, and this is essentially the, the QR code that well, how it kind of looks on, on, I think this is the desktop version. Um, uh, yeah, straightforward, um, hopefully. Like, everything tested, everything works. Um, or not quite. Uh, even though we kind of try to do our very best to, to, to compile IRO on all the platforms that we will care about, um, that still didn't catch everything. Uh, new dependencies, new things breaks. Uh, so turns out our quick implementation uh, didn't support um, explicit congestion notification on, on all the, uh, I think mostly Android phones, because um, uh, the Linux kernel didn't implement that yet, like send message. Uh, so basically, like figuring out basically what breaks, what are the workarounds, and patch the upstreams. Uh, it's kind of, uh, they were very nice, so that was kind of, wasn't too difficult, but it's it's like hunting down what these versions, etc. works. Um, the next thing is kind of interesting because uh, how blind we were to this, in a way. Uh, so I said like, initially we said like, hey, let's just do local network, right? Uh, we don't care about, we, we don't want to do this this discovery yet, um, uh, where, where, where the peer is. But then it turned out that when we actually really tried this on, 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 on two devices, from a phone to, to, to a laptop, uh, to the testing tool running on your laptop, uh, that all of a sudden we, we actually didn't do this at all. We were just connecting to the local host and we completely forgot about this. Uh, um, Solution to this is kind of easy enough in a way. You can bind to, to you know anything, but you still you, um, you still don't know which of your local networks is actually the one you need to connect to. Uh, the problem is your your if you're on a, on, a, on a laptop on your Wi-Fi, you probably have several interfaces. Your phone will have like a, a radio interface and a Wi-Fi interface and a couple of other things. Um, if you're running VMs on your on your laptop, you will have other network interfaces probably for those. And like um, so, we ended up having to stuff all the IP addresses that we, we found your local machine has into the QR code to, to, to send over and then essentially just try all of them at the same time and see which one connects. Still, the, the peer ID is verified, so you know, there's no, there's no um, concerns about that. Um, shouldn't be too hard. Uh, there is even an API for this, but again, platforms, versions, um, this was very painful. This was like, at this point, we really tried to to actually test on, on, on real phones on, uh, to check that the permissions actually would work out. Uh, turns out like on some old version, um, you could use one technique on a newer version, you had to use another technique because the old version, the old technique didn't work anymore. Um, and we, even though we try, we tried this, we, we run tests like on, on real phones. When we actually shipped this, when, when we actually built this on, on, on real applications, we still had permission problems with this. Um, at, at, in the final application. Um, so that was just very painful trial and error kind of like figuring out which techniques work. Um, and, and yeah, it was very, it was surprising that, that to the best efforts of our testing, we still couldn't like fix these things ahead of time. Um, another interesting thing was like, use this cancel operations. Um, that's not too bad. Like we, we, we knew that they would cancel operations, but they like go like cancel and then start again. Oh no, it's cancel again. Oh no, let's start anyway. Like really quickly after each other. And then like, you know, you're, you're in, a, in the middle of a transaction or, or you're writing a file or I don't know what. Um, uh, this, this wasn't so bad. Um, the, the, there was, this was mostly a bug in the, in the integration code because um, Delta Chat actually has, already has a mechanism for this, like where um, when it cancels it, it's still allows you the, the mechanism that uh, is supposed to communicate between the core and the UIs still uh, kind of allows for the, the cancellation, like you're actually supposed to wait until the operation actually managed to be canceled. Um, but the UIs still have to handle this somehow. They have to like be nice to the user because um, and, and then they have to add some in delays, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, it's this like, you know, cancellation isn't, isn't it's really annoying, they just, go really quickly between the two. Um, last thing is like, uses like progress. Um, and 
we initially we built uh, Iro like the the internal Iro um, demo tool I guess. Also had 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 uh, progress bars and they work really nicely. Um, and and the progress is kind of uh, very smooth. Um, unfortunately, on the sender side, we we didn't uh, we didn't really think of that until the um, until the applications were were kind of using this. Um, and there it is like much rougher. It's basically like on per file, you, it moves forwards rather than like during a large file. And users are really bothered by this. Like if, if like one, one of the devices, especially if you have them next to each other, if one of the devices is showing a, a progress bar showing moving and the other one is like stuttering, they're like, oh, maybe it's broken and they'll go and cancel it again. Um, it's, yeah, uh, progress matters basically to users and, and the, needs to be a really nice experience. Even though both devices are, are doing something different, you really need to try and show them the same progress, um, which is kind of annoying. Um, but anyways, um, at the end of this, like uh, before, before we actually managed to make this work, uh, we, we were three IDRO releases further. We also had to, like two releases from some upstream that we had to ask for, um, but eventually it worked. Um, the interesting thing was like most bugs were actually in the integration code. Um, IRO itself, apart from the part, the part where we were completely blind to, you know, we don't provide actually enough features for the users to do what they need, um, was actually all right. Um, but also, the, the, even though the integration code was mostly to blame, like this was, this was done by me and I knew both projects very well. So this was not like, like it's still, even though you know these things, it, it was still remarkably many um, errors, I guess, in, 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 in getting it right ent entirely. Um, so what other things are there? So like um, kind of feed feedback from, from the Delta chat side, I guess. Um, it's sort of um, obviously connectivity across networks. Like it would be nice to, to not be limited to, to this local network and also having to send this like all these, these um, uh, uh, addresses that you the, in the QR code is not the nicest. Um, uh, that is something that, that we're actively working on right now. Um, but this like this bi-directional thing is, is also kind of interesting. Like users are surprisingly uncomfortable about having a single scan like and, and that gives them all your data including their private key. Um, the, the, there is some, some resistance to this, and, and their, their first reaction is like, why can't I scan the other way around? Apart from you know the obvious thing, if the other way around, you don't have cameras the right way around, I guess. Um, uh, there are other ways to solve this as well. Instead of scanning the other way around, uh, you could like add a, add a confirmation code or something, like how Bluetooth setup does. Um, but that would also need a modification in, in, in the IRO protocol. Like right now, you couldn't you couldn't implement that. Um, but like one of the one of the recurring friction points, I guess, is like why content addressing? Uh, in in a way, like Delta Chat, even though like from our point of view, this seemed like a fairly nice solution. But there was also always this like, well, content addressing doesn't really help us. Like we just need to transfer this back up. You already we already verify authenticate people both side both ways. So when we have the, an established connection, we already know, like we trust this this other device to give us. The right, the right data, and the network connection isn't gonna flip bits on us because our transport protocol takes care of this. Um, so, so why bother with this? Um, maybe the solution is something IPNS-like, where you can say, like, just give me your most recent backup. Um, maybe the solution is we actually want to uh, also give give users like the the basically the the raw stream, like just give them a quick connection, and they can they can run things as they like. Um, we don't know. We, we still have to figure those things out, I guess. Uh, what libraries and tools and like prior art did you look at for solving these network things, especially on the local network? And um, you know, did are any of them still like in the running for solving the hole punching, or is it stuff that's going to be like written just for your project? Um, so, what did we look at? Obviously, lip to peer. Um, that's also where we initially looked for, like, uh, give us all your local addresses. Um, although we didn't end up, uh, we ended up using a different dependency uh, than, than the lip to peer one. Um, uh, regarding the hole punching part of that, uh, like the work um, that's, that's going on now, I guess, 
uh, what we're looking at there is um, uh, the the model that um, um, what's that name Tailscale uh, uses, and also um, uh, zero tier as well. Like um, like they, they essentially also they also have this whole problem hole punching problems and, and nut, nut reversals, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're looking at them to like, uh, not, yeah, figure out what our solution should look like, I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah. Thank you for the talk, really interesting. I, I have two questions. First one is, how fast is interaction with um, mail servers when we're talking about chat, like I'm talking live chat, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, Depends on your mail server, <laughs> but uh, as I said, remarkably good. Like, uh, it's if if you if you have two users on the same same server, uh, the the chat messages are sub second. Um, like, yeah. Second question: You you touched on uh, anti censorship as a like a side effect of this. Am I right that right now Delta Chat only operates on a single mail server as a user? I imagine if I wanted to work around censorship, can I use multiple mail servers to store my data? Yeah, totally. Like uh, Delta Chat is just a normal mail client, essentially under the hood, uh, and and the email system publicly is is federated. Um, so mo most mail servers that that I know of are not islands, uh, and and they just participate in the normal network. Like also because of this, I can I can just in my Delta Chat client chat to your normal email address and you'll just receive it as an email and you'll respond and I'll get the message like looking like a normal response. Um, different service, all just fine. 